sometimes people think all the things that the poor do, they do out of serendipity, you know, they do out of, they just woke up, they tried something and somewhat it worked or it didn't work. And I think we have to make the case that the things that communities do are also led by science and they're led by, you know, extremely well thought out, you know, views and processes. And there's a whole body of uh, research and thought in these things. And so there's, there are different bases for these things. There is, for example, a religious basis for the Mungano movement, you know, having taken root. Well, there was a very strong liberation theology that led some, you know, Catholic priests to be part of this movement, and they gave a lot of impetus to it. And, and we exposed people in the movement to these stories and these movies, you know, in order for them to then build an aspiration that is founded around something very concrete. And because they were Christians, and some of them were Catholics, they were very, it was very easy for them to identify with these things. And when they saw a real priest come to live among them, you know, come to pray for them when they lose one of their own, you know, take them to hospital, it was very easy for them to connect, you know, to this organizing that was also being led by the church. We had a very concrete non-violence movement that was also pushing, you know, the very same ideas uh, that were founded by, uh, again, another group of Catholic uh, priests together with the secular leaders that gave rise to an institution, Chemichemi Ukweli, and their influence in Uruma and several other places and in using the idea of base groups. Uh, in the slums to do discussions around change and has been very critical and their trainings which they were doing uh, you know for uh, that ran for about two years was very useful in generating the kind of leadership uh, that we have seen the movement you know have of course we have had uh, university professors you know who have one time or the other given thought to, you know to the type of work that has emerged that has strengthened the movement of course Kituo Cha Sharia, which was essentially a team, a, a, you know, an institution of lawyers that was saying we can use the law uh, to perhaps look for, you know, the kind of long-term change that we are looking for, developed the discourse around public interest litigation uh, that has supported the movement in various other ways. And they've then therefore availed a whole group of lawyers to the poor, you know, from whom the poor have several times ran, ran to, you know, and gotten support in even theory uh, in terms of what is legally possible and what is not legally possible. We have had research students, you know, come into the movement, you know, to do their research and, you know, build a body of thought around some of these things uh, that we've seen. We've seen surveyors, uh, you know, architects, you know, draw uh, alternatives that they think can work for the poor and some of the informal settlements have living monuments and testimony you know to the contribution of uh, professionals and and for me the essence is that all those little bits and pieces have been in a sense building blocks you know for the movement and so today someone in the movement will say go to Mkuru Kwanjenga if you want to see a model you know of what we could do with low cost, low cost housing you know, go to Kibra if you want to see a toilet. And, and that toilet wouldn't have been if, it, if some professionals didn't sit down and think you know, very strategically about it.